On the western edge of northern Saskatchewan's prolific Athabasca Basin lies the Patterson Uranium District, home to the largest uranium finds of this century. The corridor stretches through Fission Uranium's PLS project, NextGen's Rook One project, and the Hook Lake joint venture owned by Pierpoint Uranium, Cameco Corp, and Arano Canada. In part one, we compiled the common elements seen in all significant uranium deposition along the Patterson trend. From this, we can say that the ideal setting includes multiple parallel graphitic conductors. Bands of diorite nice and occasional mafic intrusives focused along these structures. Evidence of a mineralization event, specifically hydrothermal alteration that has created chlorite, hematite, and or clay minerals within the boundaries of these conductors, and areas favorable to deposition, including cross-cutting faults or bends in the conductors. Our upcoming drill program will focus further north along the trend in the area we call the Sabre Zone. Prioritization of this area was prompted by the results of Hole 105 earlier this year. Comparing Hole 105 to the model, we find compelling evidence of a significant mineralization event. Here we found an extensive stretch of rock that has been altered to hematite and clay by intensely heated fluids moving through the area. Further, anomalous uranium mineralization throughout the hole demonstrates that these hydrothermal fluids were uranium bearing. Following this pattern to the north required some refined data in order to identify appropriate drill targets. Earlier this year, Pierpoint carried out a stepwise moving loop electromagnetic survey designed to delineate the graphitic conductors in this area. The results were very encouraging as they highlighted the signature long parallel bands of conductors stretching to the north. Next, we need to determine whether the area contains what we consider the appropriate host rock for uranium deposition. For this, we reference the detailed gravity survey recently provided by the Geological Survey of Canada. The gravity survey calculates the density property of the subsurface materials. The higher gravity values seen here in pink indicate denser rock, while the lower values in blue are the least dense. By reconciling this information to actual drill results, we've been able to determine that the pink areas appear to represent diorite gneiss as the dominant rock type, while the yellow are primarily graphitic gneiss. Drilling within this, the gravity transition zones has consistently encountered both rock types, a key element of our model. A large gravity transition area from high to low response lies to the north of hole 105. Our analysis has provided additional areas of interest where graphitic conductors lie along these gravity response transition zones. These will be the subject of future programs. For now, however, our focus is on the Sabre Zone, where we see our target conductors continuing through a long stretch of gravity transition rock north of hole 105. The last indicator we will consider here is a more detailed view of the geology. Here we utilize a magnetic geophysical survey to image anomalies in the Earth's magnetic field which helps to detect and map faults and igneous intrusions in the subsurface materials. We can clearly see the underlying setting of bends and curves along the conductors. Also, we can see here evidence of cross-cutting structures through the area. A closer examination of hole 105 shows that despite significant evidence of a uranium mineralization event, there are two elements missing from our model. First, although there are numerous parallel shear zones, no graphite was noted as occurring within these structures. Second, the host rock was primarily diorite gneiss and mafic intrusives, with only one minor band of granitic gneiss, suggesting that we were on the edge of the gravity transition zone. With only one hole remaining in the last season, Purepoint chose to drill at the far edge of the gravity transition zone in order to see how far the alteration and mineralization continued and whether the host rock had transitioned closer to our target model geology. That was hole 115 and was located well over four kilometers away. The results were very encouraging. Over two and a half miles away, we not only saw continued alteration between parallel conductors and anomalous radioactivity, but as well graphite along the shear zones and an appropriate mix of both granitic and diuretic nice rock types. What this means is that the Sabre Zone appears to contain the geologic setting and essential elements of our ideal uranium deposit model. Our next drill program is currently being planned and is scheduled for review by the Hook Lake Joint Venture Partners later this summer. The specific focus of our exploration will be placed on the 4.2 kilometer Sabre Zone at the Hook Lake Project in the Patterson Uranium District.